Hey everybody, it's Brian here again from quantlabs.net. I wanted to show you a, a new, uh, sorry, a, what I call a legacy way of doing Gurch in uh, MATLAB. Uh, it's still, it's still, still currently can be run in my MATLAB 2013A version, uh, but uh, these, new, these functions I'm going to show you for Gurch will uh, be deprecated. I think they've already been removed, but they've I will throw warnings uh, once I do run them, but I just want to show you some of the nice, more graceful ways of uh, how math works and MATLAB handles functions that are no longer either compatible or been removed from the current version and future versions of MATLAB. Now again, in MATLAB 2013a, they're still there. It's now the new version of uh, 2014a is coming out. I'm not sure if they will have formally removed these functions, but I'll show you how they gracefully um, handle it versus R, Python, which will just break and your functions and your scripts will just no longer function. The wonderful people over that design these languages are pretty well drug abusers, I guess, don't understand about like intelligent software engineering. But nonetheless, let's talk about older versions of how to do stuff with Garch and the power of Garch. All right, so I've introduced what Garch is. Um, this is the tutorial here. Um, now, again, I'm not a, a mathematician here, but I'm gonna do my best to interpret what I can uh, and uh, try to explain it to those that are new to it. Um, anybody else that can provide a little more intelligence, please uh, comment away or something, just to help out others uh, that might be new to it. Um, so let's get down to it. I'm going to show you the old script, the current script that I've got. I'm going to make a couple of uh, changes here. Now what you'll see here is got load X, Y, Z. It's got this prices uh, uh, time series I'm going to assume. Uh, but these are not out of box uh, file examples that something like MATLAB ships. So all I did was really substitute the, the before the other uh, same data file I used in the previous exam, example of the mark and pound converted the Y from data and then I just replaced uh, the price to return of Y to XYZ so from this point on XYZ on the price to return we can follow through with the tutorial is going to give you a different looking graph so uh, that's what we do here up to this line. Uh, as I said, uh, this Garch fit, which is uh, right here, we pass into it uh, basically our time series, which is somewhat more intelligent, if you ask me, uh, instead of passing parameters to what Garch model you want. But the output of it is, um, is where's the output? Uh, here's the output. So how many parameters we got? We got uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five parameters that we're going to be dealing with. So we got one, two, three, four, five, uh, five to these amounts. So we're going to be calculating our coefficients. Uh, I'm going to let you obviously read these. We're going to calculate our estimation errors, standard errors, uh, LLF, lo long likelihood objective function values, our innovations. Um, that's what we're calculating from this one line, this one function, and then the summary, or no, and then the sigmas, which is the conditions, conditional standard deviation vector corresponding to the innovations. Okay, so that's what we're returning from this Garch fit on this time series. And then we use the Garch pred prediction on those coefficients with the same time series. Uh, this one has been uh, uh, removed as it says here in the, in the 2014 aid documentation so they want us to use forecast now I've seen estimate use which I did in the previous video so that's a more up there up-to-date way of doing it but nonetheless let's uh, continue with our Garch pred function I'm going to try and uh, uh, run here uh, so we're passing as I said the coefficients XYZ and uh, from there uh, we are uh, returning the S uh, forecast and the Y forecast. So essentially what we're passing it are the spec, the spec or specification, 
as well as our uh, time series. Okay. Now uh, the output arguments is our sigma forecast matrix of the conditional standard deviation of future innovations to model residuals on a, on a per, a per period basis. Now again, I'm gonna let you read that. And we also get the mean forecast. I think that's what we're looking for here, uh, right here. Yeah, so YF forecast is the mean forecast. So that's what we're, we're calculating. We dump it out um, and then um, we set a, a, a period now. So in essence, what we're doing here in the Garch Pred, we didn't set any uh, period. So number of periods, now we're doing that uh, by setting the period at 10. Now bring out and dump out these values, okay? So uh, for whatever reason, there's a constant value here. Um, and uh, and then what we do is we do some manipulation here by uh, we can calculate the unconditional standard deviation uh, right here using this uh, calculus uh, this, this uh, uh, algorithm and then we plot the sigma okay so our sigma is from Right here, this is our standard deviations of the first garch fit, or the only garch fit that we run. Now the other thing is we uh, move on to the next step, where we are now going to do a garch prediction uh, using a thousand number period, right? So now we're going to generate a, uh, a plot for it. So we're going to do a plot where the blue represents, uh, where is it? Um, Is that uh, what blue represents? Uh, volatility. Um, yeah, so the uh, red, I believe, is the, I can never say this, the AC asymptotic uh, value as well as the standard deviation forecast, which is the blue, okay? So that's what we're going to calculate. We generate it through these set of lines. Um, we've got the S forecast, and the red, and blah, blah, blah. Pretty simple stuff. And then um, we do another coefficient on calculation of 10 and some other fun stuff like yippee yay yay. Okay, so let's run the script. This guy right here. So as I said, we are using the mark pound data, as I explained earlier. Um, so we now know that our Y is this. Let's see what Y, it's 1975. And these are the, uh, uh, the actual data. And we calculate the X, Y, Z using that price return, price to return function. There's that, and then we run the uh, Gertsch fit, pass the time series, and we bring back all these coefficient, like that, errors, the LLF, I don't think it means that a lot, innovations, and then more importantly the sigma, the, the, the standard deviation estimates. So now we're going to predict with the coefficients that we got against that time, same time series. So let's run that. So we get our standard deviation forecast and our, I believe that's the mean forecast. And we'll typically dump it out. Now, I did mention using that Garch Pred. So it says that it has been removed from a future release used uh, uh, forecast or of ARIMA, Garch, e -Garch and GJR, GJR uh, models instead. Um, so if this was R, it would bomb. It wouldn't do anything. But at least you get a warning message. It's still there. It works. And this is a newer version of um, MATLAB. So it's an older script. It's a nice way of, of a lot of the more um, robust languages to handle that. G, all the .NET and uh, Java handle it better. Uh, versus something like Python or R, which just breaks your current 
packages. It's the highlight, and I just, hey, it's still there, but it's just warning you. All right, so um, we've run the GARCH prediction. Uh, let's see the values. So there's our st uh, standard deviation, our mean forecast as well. We run that little uh, formula that I, I showed you. Um, yeah. So let's run that formula. So that generates that data. I'm going to plot the sigmas. Uh, the title conditional standard deviations and now we're going to do uh, the same thing but with the garage pred but we're going to pass it a thousand bring back our new updated s forecast standard deviation let's see what that brings back so we're going to plot and uh, we're going to do the other one okay so what's happened there is the blue dash is the uh, standard deviation forecast and then the um, uh, yeah, there. the uh, the uh, red is that asymptotic uh, value okay uh, so now we're just gonna do some more calculations have more fun I guess <laughs> and just uh, doing some more garch pred I'm going to do a come sum value. And there you go. It's all done. The script is now complete. So there you go. The legacy versus the new way of doing it. Um, the GARCH, which can be very useful. And you can estimate, as you can see in this tutorial, all the way out to a thousand periods. So that could be a thousand ticks or something. I don't know. I'm just saying um, it's kind of an interesting. Um, uh, way to predict the markets, I guess. Talk to you later.